All right, I got my 2025 all tied down, ready to haul out of here. Hey, listen, if you're interested in learning how to load one of these tractors onto a utility trailer, tie it down safely for transport, then check out my video. Talk about the equipment first. The trailer I've been using is this one. It's a PJ Trailers 18 foot utility trailer. 7,000 pounds gross vehicle weight rating, 2,200 pounds empty, which means I can get about 4,800 pounds worth of cargo on it. Uh, the tractor fully loaded with implements, weights, everything like that. It's going to run around 4,000 pounds depending on what I have on here. So I feel like this is really solid. It's, um, it's got this ready rail system which is this thing here which is unique to pj it's actually a little bit light i don't use this it's got its own set of d-rings on it um but i think they're too light for what i need so i've been using the stake pockets i'll show this when we get out to where the tractor is but there's a stake pocket d-ring that drops right down in one of these pockets that's what i tie down the tractor with uh, tandem axle brakes on both axles it's a dovetail so 18 feet all together 16 feet to here the last two feet is a dovetail you can see how that slants down there now I wanted this because I do a lot of moving around in my mower and this is good for anything that's got low ground clearance because it, it's an easier transition to get from the ramp up into the bed of the trailer here and since I have the mower on there knowing that would be low I thought I needed the dovetail and it's actually worked out really well for me the downside of the dovetail is it's going to be a little bit low this is about 11 inches here of ground clearance versus roughly about 15 that's right in here so you do lose a little bit of clearance there so if you had a really tight area tight spot steep hill driveway something like that it may not clear it. In fact, I've had it rub a couple of times, but for the most part, this works for me. It's actually a really, really nice setup. Uh, it's got a heavy duty lift gate on here. So it's got the mesh, which is nice. And then this is what I really like about it. These kind of reinforced heavy duty rails on here is what I drive the tractor up in. The 2025, believe it or not, fits exactly on these rails which is really really super nice i feel like it's a really solid way to load the tractor up get it strapped down uh i, I really like this setup a lot you know i see a lot of guys trying to say hey can i get away with a 16 foot trailer 14 foot trailer single axle a lot of comments about that i think this is the minimum setup of what you need for the 2025 i really feel it's very solid i would definitely go with 18 feet when you start adding on implements, other things that you are needing to haul on there, you definitely need the room. It seems long, maybe seems large for the 2025, but I do think this is the right setup. One thing I always do, especially if you're not on level ground, put some chocks on the front wheel of my truck or whatever your tow vehicle is, especially if you're leaning forward on this. Um, you know, it may not be obvious, but you always want to make sure that the trailer is connected to your tow vehicle before you do any loading and unloading. That has to be solid, connected on the front there. I mentioned that the D-rings that I use instead of the ready rail system, it's this one here. This is very heavy duty. It just drops right down in here and has a pin. It'll go through the side of it here through and then snaps off with this cotter pin here that's going to hold the straps i use a axle strap on the front that actually tie down to the bracket that's on the front of the tractor and i'll show you that chalk up the back wheels again get on a level surface if you can if you're not especially you want to have those chalked up on the rear i use a lasso strap which is this guy here because it gets over these big tires on the 2025 really nicely 
and uh, I will show you how we strap it when we get on there. The other thing I do is this. So you think about it, all this weight's coming on the back of the trailer here. As soon as that weight is here, the front of the trailer is going to pivot up because of that. Now, if I didn't have any support back here, that could you know, raise up the back of my truck. So I really don't want that to happen at all. So it's a little kludgy, but it works. I just use one of these jack stands here and I just put a little thing together beneath it just to get some height up there put this right underneath the back of the rail here that'll hold this part down when I'm coming on the uh, trailer right, here's a side side view of loading the tractor onto the trailer I'm going to pull the bucket up to move towards the back here you want to have it in four-wheel drive as well those front wheels need to have traction to help get up the ramp so I'm making sure that's there you're going to use low gear, you're going to go really slow and careful here, just line it up at the back. It's going to slowly start to crawl up there. You can see the back of the trailer is staying very stable, the front of the trailer as well. Nothing is getting picked up, nothing is pulling up the back of my truck because I've got that rear support. So I'm just crawling on slowly, I'm going to move it up as I get closer. I'll drop the bucket down so I can see where the front is. And when I get close, I got my spot I go to, get it a little bit forward of those tandem wheels, and I put the bucket down. I don't show it here, but you want to make sure you put down the three-point hitch in the back as well. And that is a position you want to be in to park it. Now, here's a view from the front. So different angle. I'm going to come on here. This uh, tractor is nice with a 54-inch mower deck because the side guard for the mower I just line that up with my right side that's going to come right along the edge of this trailer my trailer is 77 inches wide so it really fits on there nicely when that side guard on the left you can see here is right on the edge of the trailer that's right center coming on there again dropping the bucket as I get close so I can see what I'm doing I come on in when you're done bucket is down three point hitch is down Parking brake is on, shut the tractor down, and then you load it up. A couple of important things to note. You don't want it too far back. You don't want it too far forward. This is about the right position on the trailer that I load the tractor. So you can see I've got it a bit forward of these first tandem wheels. My front wheel is kind of maybe, I don't know, two, three feet out from the bucket. I've got a little bit of room in the front here ahead of that. That's pretty well balanced. And if, you're, if your tow vehicle starts to lean way down, you know you got too much tongue weight on there. If it starts to pull back up, then the tractor's positioned too far to the back. So it's really important to get the thing on the right spot of the trailer. All right, to strap it down in the front, I use an axle strap, but I actually have it hooked to this front bracket here. It's just a little easier to get at instead of getting it around the axle which is back in there and it's a two inch ratchet strap 3300 pounds working load limits that's plenty um, plenty for what we're trying to do here to hold the tractor down if you don't know anything about ratchet straps they're pretty simple to, to get them started you want to thread it through from the back right here I'm trying to show this there I'm threading this through the back of it like that and I'm going to loop this back around the front and come back through here so I'm through the back and then once back through the front and then once you do that you kind of slide this tighten this up pretty much as much as you can right here just by hand and then once you have it together like that or pulled down then you can just start the ratcheting and grip it in there and then tighten that thing down same process for the back i use a lasso strap which is nice because these wheels are large and uh, this is also 3300 pounds working load limit same two inch strap but it's got this little lasso on here that'll just grip around, comes right over the tire, goes back down in here. I'm going to set this up the same way. So I came in, 
through the back and then out back through the front. Just tighten this up. Let me just set this on here. Right through there. And then you can just start to ratchet this thing together. Now, something really important on these ratchet straps, if you don't know this, I had this problem once and I want to make sure that everybody who's watching this knows how to use one of these things. There is a lock on this and the lock is like right in here so you may get this thing really tight and think it's done but if this isn't locked meaning this slot is all the way down on this here this uh, this little latch right here that uh, strap will not be secure I mean it's gonna start coming apart as soon as you if you have any kind of load as soon as you start going down the road that's gonna start coming apart so to lock it you just want to make sure this goes all the way back in like that so that's the locked position right there once you got this tight enough you want to make sure that thing is on the lock position when this little edge is down under that lever really important especially with these tractors because they're so heavy all right we are tied down and ready to haul out of here just a couple final things to note <clears throat> it's nice to tie off your ends any loose ends of the ratchet straps with one of these reusable zip ties i got this tip from goodworks tractors the other thing i was going to say too is tractor time with tim does a really nice video on working load limit the types of straps you can use the how to calculate the weight and that sort of thing so i'd recommend checking that out if you're interested in more of that i always like to do a walk around you know make sure the chocks are up my all my ratchets are locked i got my zip ties there check the back you know always seems like you're leaving something a chalk or miss something make sure all these are tight and locked on here tied down looks good no chalks there that's it thanks for watching this video hopefully this was helpful for you guys